All right, gone, gone. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. I'm Brother Debar. Gone, Officer Mahar. And we got a quick lesson, and this lesson is going to be a response to what a brother uh, posted in the comment section. He asked us to do a video over a heat. The question was, can y'all make a video on how sinners get blessed when the Bible says, blessed are they who keep his commandments? How are they getting these blessings if they're not keeping it? So the fact of the matter is, it's not that the Most High God is blessing them. It's that Satan can bless people too. He is the prince of the power of the air. He has rulership with his world. Just like how the Most High God has children, Satan has children too. And he used his children to bless people also. And we know who that is, so-called white man. So let's get into the scriptures, right? So let's get Luke chapter 4 and uh, verse 1. Because, hey, Satan tempted Yahawashah with the same thing. Uh, this is Luke. Chapter 4 and verse 1. And Yahweh being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Right. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So this is not talking about Esau the devil. This is talking about the devil devil. He's the one that was tempting Yahweh while he was fasting those 40 days. But go ahead. Verse 3. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Right. Go ahead. And Yahweh shall answer him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Right. So this is what Yahweh shall say. He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, physical bread, by every word of God. Because if you go to Ezekiel chapter 3, it talks about, uh, he told, the Most High God told Ezekiel to eat this roll. And that roll was a spiritual roll. He was going to put his words in his mouth. So we should live by the words of God more importantly. Yes, we have to live by food, but it's talking about living by the words of the Most High. But go ahead. Verse 5. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain. Right, so this is the point right here. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment of time. Right, so the devil showed you how it shot all the kingdoms of the world, man. And if you look in a... In the modern day time right now, he does the same thing, man. The devil will show you. He show you Jamaica. He show you the Bahamas. He show you all this stuff on TV. And you desire to have it. Just like he showed you how it shot. But go ahead. Con. Verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. So why is he saying that? He clearly telling you he can bless you too. He says, all the glory, all everything that you see, I have the power to give it to someone else. Who gave him the authority? Who gave him the power to do that? The most high God. So at the end of the day, the most high can bless you and Satan can bless you also. That's that's verse seven, right? No, that was verse six. Right, verse seven, verse seven. Right if thou therefore will worship me, right? all shall be done. And this is exactly what Esau through the spiritual demon Satan requires of you. He wants you to worship him. How do we work? How do you worship Satan nowadays? You by signing a contract, signing your nature over to him. It's not Satan's job to keep his end of the contract. That is your job to keep the end of the contract. And once you sign that contract, all bets are off. That's how Satan operates, man. When you sign, everything is off the table because his job is to get your dumb, yo, yo, you to sign it, man. And it's a lot of dumb niggas you see out here, they sign it. Rappers, playing sports, all this, man. Satan offered them the glory. He offers them everything, man. This is Satan blessing them, but they under one condition. You sign that contract. And they don't, Satan don't, it's not his job to show you the, the small print. And that's not his job, man. His job is to literally get you to sign that contract, man. To see if you believe in the most high or do you trust in riches. All right? If you got something, go ahead. But uh, from there, let's go to uh, Revelation 13 right quick. So let's get this. Because the scriptures talk about how the world is going to uh, wonder after Satan, man. 13 or what? And uh, we're going to start at verse 6. But, man, the whole world wondering after Satan, this is how we know. We do the total opposite of what the world is doing. So if you're getting blessed with things of the world then most likely it's not the most high God doing that for you. It's Satan because these things were given to him to bless people. But go ahead. God, this is 
the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. To blaspheme. Fact, let's start at four. Let's get the context of it. All right, verse four says, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. You get 2 Corinthians 11, 13. Keep going? Yeah. It says, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. All right. And they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with them? Right, and the beast goes into NATO, EU, the, this system, this American system, this worldwide system, which we call the New World Order, which is ran by Hashatan. Mm -hmm. And who's implementing this New World Order? His children. But go ahead. Come. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. All right, go ahead. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God. All right. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And that's what Satan do. He do the total opposite of what the most high do. He wants to be the most high, but he does the total opposite. He thinks he has something better to offer you. But go ahead. Read this last verse. Verse seven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. All right. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Right, so verse 8 is the point. Go ahead. Verse 8 says, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Right? All that dwell upon the earth going to worship this beast, this system, Hashatan, Satan, the world. Because look what they're doing. Everybody's promoting the, they're promoting stupidity. You know, they promote all kinds of stuff. They're they, they doing pranks. They're millionaires off pranks. We were just talking about it. Millionaires, they, they play video games and they're making millions off this. They're promoting stupidity. They're not promoting the ways of the most high. These should be the richest people on earth. The people that promote the most high and actually shows you how to walk in his ways. But it's not. It's the total opposite. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. Verse 8 again. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Right. Whose names are not written, written in the book of life. Of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So these people that you see in the world that's being blessed by Hashatan, these people are not written in the book of life. Why? Because they're so focused on, on what the world has to offer them. They not giving, they not caring what the most high God gotta say. And this is how you determine the fruit. This is how you determine who's with the most high and who's with Satan, man. Satan gonna bless you with stuff that you always desire. The most high is not gonna give you stuff that's gonna distract you from him. And that's simple, man. But get that right quick. Book of 2 Corinthians, you should want chapter 11 and verse 13. Chapter 13 yeah. and verse, what, what verse was it? 2 Corinthians 11 and 13. All right. So the book of 2 Corinthians, right chapter 11 right and verse 13. Right. It says, but such as false apostles, right? deceitful workers, right? transforming themselves into an apostle of Christ. Right, so we see that. The Satan has set up blind shepherds. From, from the blacks all the way to the whites, he set up blind shepherds, man. For the black community and for the white community. They got the Mexican community. They All these are false shepherds of the Most High. They claim they come in the name of Yamashiach Yahweh But go ahead, this is the point. Uh, verse 14 and no marvel right where satan himself is transformed into an angel of light right so i want to look up this word marvel i looked it up last night i forgot it but i do want to look it up again so the word marvel let's get the word marvel right so the word marvel it means to be filled with wonder or astonishment let's get some similarities uh uh I ain't really got no good ones. So wonder or miracle, be amazed is the real, is the point. So it says, be filled with wonder or astonishment or be amazed. So he says right here, read verse 14 one more time. Kind of the book of 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. Right. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And this is what the churches and you no know, everybody, man, everybody overlooks this scripture. Because they look at everything that you have, the God blessed you. Mm -hmm. When they be at them damn uh, Grammy Awards and all this, they be, I want to thank God. Right. No, Satan blessed you. That's who blessed you, man. 
It says it right here. No marvel. Don't be amazed at this. Like we just read the definition. Don't be amazed at this. Satan himself trans transformed himself into an angel of light. Who is the light of the world? So like the king. Who the light of the world? Yeah, how was shot the light of the world? He transformed himself into an angel of light. He come at you humbly. He come at you like he he loved God and they they about the Bible. But it's all deceit, man. All of it is deceit. On down to his minions, it's all deceit, man. They job is to get you to sign them contracts. You know, Satan is to get this man to sign a contract. He's the owner of a label. He gets you to sign that contract. Then he under him. He gets you. It's a domino effect, man. Mm -hmm. And that's simple. All right, so that's it. That's, yeah, go ahead. Hey, and one of them things is once the, once you do sign over and you're getting down with Esau's program, the thing that keeps them running and to keep you there is they promote wickedness. Like homosexuality, you hear a lot of conspiracy theories and you hear a lot of men saying, or women singers, actresses, they say um, they have to do like weird stuff like to get where they at. They have to let someone, you know, you know, take advantage of them. You have to do this with this person. You have to do this with person with this person, right? You can't do this. You have to do this. They make you do a lot of wicked things. And if I may, I want to throw a scripture on it because I'm um, selling your soul is something that's is, is really real, and it can be done on the physical level, which the which the ICAM is bringing out, where you write your name and you really you really do a physical contract. But it, we know that things are double. Right, and men will sign themselves over to Satan and not even know that's what they're doing either. You didn't really give consent, but that's what you're doing, whether you believe it or not. Hey, but I'm gonna read this. This is Sirach chapter chapter um, ten and verse nine. It says, "Why is the earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man." So he's asking, "Why is everybody so proud walking around here?" Right? You ain't got nothing, honestly. You just a you just a mortal. You can die. Then it says, there's nothing more wicked than a covetous man. A lot of things that you see with these famous men who yearn to be famous, they're really covetous. They want what other men have, want what this woman have. They want to do the things this man do, how he does it. It's not a more wicked thing than a covetous man because they'll do anything to get it. Mm -hmm. It says, for such and one set of his own soul to sell. That's in there. It says, for such and one set of his own soul to sell. Because while he liveth, he cast away his vows. Because while he roam and walk in this earth, the wisdom and everything, he cast that away. He cast that behind him. They tell you in the book of Sirach that when a wise man hear a word, he add unto it. But a foolish man, he cast it over his shoulder, man, and consider it's nothing. And that's what they do. The wisdom of this Bible, they cast it over their shoulders like it's nothing. He said that a, a wise man, someone who knows the law, statute, commandments, know to keep the law, statute, commandments, and keep the faith, they should be the richest men walking this earth. But those are the poorest men walking this earth. And the men who promote folly, wickedness, iniquity, abominations, those are the men who have the most um, unpopularity, notoriety, right? The word is famous. Those are the men who sold themselves over, man. They set their soul on for sale, man. They put it up for auction. Either can God give me all of this or can Satan? And they sit and they sell it to Satan. Hey, and who gonna do it the quickest? That's what they looking for. Right. Microwave generation. Right. They want it now. Hey, and what else do they call them? They call them stars. Mm. They call them stars. Why are you calling huh? Idols. Yeah, idols. They say that. Literally, this is my idol. Ice Cube is my idol. These people are stars. Ain't nothing star. They are darkness, full of darkness, man. They sold they sold. And once you sign that contract, man, it's it for you. There's no coming back. Just like the scriptures say, once you lead the truth, there's no coming back. When you sign your soul, you can't get it back. Tupac gave a perfect, he, he, he showed you, man. He like, bro, when you sell your soul, it ain't no getting it back. There is no getting it back after you sign your soul, man. You're drowning in that. Satan going to do whatever he want with you after that. And Satan always comes and collects, man. Always. Yeah, he'll bless you for the time being, but when he don't need you no more, when you're not popping no more, he's going to get rid of you. Right. And or if, if you, you ain't being obedient, go ahead. Though. What happened, um, Salak here? Go ahead. What happened with, uh, yeah. What happened with that, um, the Disney Channel, um, that's so Raven and it's right. another dude. Uh, Eddie, uh, the, the, the 
the young black brother. Yeah, Eddie. Eddie. On the show, it was Eddie, but his name is something. Orlando. Uh, Orlando Brown. Brown. Yeah, yeah. That man, he getting it bad. If you try and speak out against the wickedness that's happening behind the scenes, they'll make you look crazy. Mm -hmm. Right? They'll threaten you and be like, look, we're going to do this to your family. Right? We're going to pull up them old videos of you doing gay stuff. If you speak out against us, this is what's going to happen to your mama. You can only imagine. So the things that we hear about America, the things that we do hear about, it's bad. But think about the things that you can't see, man. It's always ten times better. 10 times worse for things you can't see, man. For real. There's a lot of bones in that closet. All right? You wanted me to get a Cyrac 20 and 9, though, right? That was Cyrac 20 and 9? No. no. Proverbs 20 and 9. No, that's Cyrac. That's the okay. one. Yeah, go ahead. Get that one. All right, and then we get the Ephesians. All right, Con. This is Cyrac chapter 20 and verse 9. All right. It says, There is a sinner that have good success right? in evil things. So there is a sinner that have good success, stars, idols. These rappers, these football players, they they occupied in evil things. They're not occupied. At the end of the day, they slaves. They have to go to practice every day. The rappers got to be in a studio 24-7. They don't even get time to spend with their family. These are the things they're not showing you. Only thing they're showing you is the, the rainbow watching. Oh, that's all they're showing you. That is literally all they show you, man. Right. Money and ice. That's all they show. They don't show you nothing else. And that's how Satan wanted. He wants you to think that it's all good. That everything is all good and it's not, man. Them brothers have no idea what they did. They have no idea they signed their soul over to Satan. They have no idea the Lord is finished. The Lord is not going to protect them at all anymore. Because at the end of the day, Satan is reporting back to God too. Like, yeah, yeah, he signed that. He said he did some more stuff too. Most high, like, all right, I got something for him. Simple. Everybody's reporting back to the most high, man. Everybody, but that's it on that. Can you read right. it one more time? It says there is a sinner that have good success in evil things. So there's a sinner that has good success, man. A sinner that has good success. So, brother, this scripture right here should this should answer it all right here. That's Satan can bless is. people too, man. Right. There's a sinner that has good success, but it's not of the most high. Why? Because the most high say he don't hear sinners. Hmm. Now, if I get that right quick for edification, that'd be beautiful with that. John 9 and 31, yeah. That'd be perfect. Right. Can I finish this out? Yeah, yeah, come on. It says, and there is a gain that turneth into a loss. There's a gain. How? Because what is what, what do it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? It turns into a loss. Nothing profitable about it. Nothing you're going to benefit from it. Because the stuff that you do have, people only flocking to you because you have it. But once you lose it, it's all lost. You lost. Not only you lost, but the people around you. Every everybody lost in a situation. You know, when it, even down to your mother, she lost your your soul is lost. You subject unto Satan now. But get that. This is the book of John, chapter nine and verse thirty-one. Right. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Right. But if a if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his, his will, will, him. So at the end of the day, it says God here if not sinners. And then it says there is a sinner that have good success, man. Simple. That is simple as hell, man. Ain't no getting around, ain't no way of getting around it. So you got something? Uh yeah, real quick. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, so this is um this is first Kings chapter 21 and 25. First Kings 21 and 25. It says, but there was none like Ahab. If you know, if you read the book of Kings, you know Ahab, he was wicked. Ahab, it says, but there was none like Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. He sold himself to do wickedness. And that's what you got to do. He said you have to, and what I just read in Mark, right, 4, yeah. he told you you have to, you have to worship sure. him. You got to do what I say. And everything that he say, and it's not Satan's fault. That's how the Most High God created him. He created him for a reason, and he just playing out his role the best possible way. But if you fall into that trap, then you're going to get that reward. You know, you're going to get caught in a snare. But his whole thing is to get you to do wickedness, to go off, to do what's contrary. And don't don't sell yourself. Don't sell yourself over to that wickedness. Man. Sell yourself short. Right. You worth way more than that. man. Hey, he got you. He got you shooting for the damn sky 
where the Most High trying to give you more than that. Like, trying to give you the sky. The Most High gonna give you the sky and the and the and the, and the, the universe and the people that's in it, man. Right. He got you shooting for the sky when you can have the whole thing. Right. He got you shooting for the sky, man. Um, that's all I got right now. Though. All right, Con. You so, want me to grab some? Uh, uh, you can get uh Revelations twenty two, but okay. read that Ephesians two and two right quick. It's the book of Ephesians. Chapter 2 and verse 2. Right? Read a little louder, right? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. Right? Wherein, in times past, you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And this is this is how we know it's talking about Hashatan. It says, Wherein times past, ye walked according to the course of this world. We all walked according to the course of this world, and we all know exactly what to dodge dealing with this world. That's why the Lord left us in the world for so long. Then he brought us in the truth. We know exactly what we know. For, for, me, for instance, I can sit, I'm like, yeah, he's selling drugs. I, I know to stay away from that because the Lord left me in the world. I dealt with this stuff. So whatever it is, man, when it comes to you trying to be famous, you know how to, you know all of the ins and outs of this. So you know, you should know when the Lord is, is what the Lord requires of you and what, and how to make it in the world. You're not going to make it in the world and be right with the most high at the end of the day, man. That's not happening. You can't straddle the fence like the brother be saying, man. It's either one way. It's only one way, man. You cannot climb up some other way like they tell you in John 10. Right, the straight and narrow. That's the only way you get in, man. And, uh, and if you look at, if you go through the scriptures, man, even our Lord was poor, man. He was homeless. He says, man, the the... The fowls of the earth have somewhere to, uh, to go, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Not saying that you got to be homeless. I'm just giving you a scenario like that rich life ain't of the most high, man. It's not. It tells you that in Proverbs 30. Give me not poverty nor riches, but keep me content. And we all want to be content. All right, so keep going, though. I'll read two again. Kodash? Yeah. This is Ephesians 2 and 2. Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. And that's Hashatan. Go ahead. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Wow, because they don't listen to the most high God. They follow Satan. Because Satan only has one law. Would you and that this is common sense. Us being in the truth, we can look and see why they're following Satan. These the, the, the children of this world don't like to listen. So, yeah, they're going to listen to Satan. Do what you want to do over God with uh, restrictions, man. Restrictions on the earth. These damn vile affections and, 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 and adultery and killing to get where they, they want to be. All of this wicked stuff, man. Of course they're going to follow uh, Hashatan at the end of the day. But go ahead. Verse 3. Among whom... Also, we all had our conversation in times past in lust of our flesh. Right, so this is how you would know also that you, you operate in that spirit. And once you operate in that spirit, Satan is going to come offer you stuff. Satan, the, at the end of the day, Satan want, he don't, he's not worrying about somebody he already has. But he is going, like when you come into the truth, oh yeah, he's coming for you. Mm. He is coming for you. You best believe that he's going to offer you stuff. You're That's simple. Beguile you. Right. You're going to get this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and you can use it. You can, man, when you get wisdom, knowledge, I'll be thinking about stuff that I could have done in the world, not like uh, wicked stuff, but things that I should have already been doing. I'm like, damn, I should have been doing this. Now having a wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and Satan will use that for evil. Mm. But go ahead. I'm going to read it again. Right. Ephesians 2 and verse 3. Among whom... Also, we all had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, right. fulfilling the desires of the flesh right. and the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Man, touchy, touchy, filly, filly, do what thou wilt. That's Satan's commandment, man. He give you all this money, and he make it to where you you so powerful, and you can do whatever you want. You can buy yourself out of murder, man. We see it. We see it happening on you. Hey, on social media right now, we see it happening. Rappers buying themselves out of murder, man. So this is this goes into glory and power that Satan will allow you to have just by money. 
But go ahead. Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, right. even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Hamashiach Yahushah, right. by grace ye are saved. So at the end of the day, we was all in the world. All of us doing wickedness. We was the children of disobedience. We was the children of wrath. But it, then it says, but God who is rich in mercy for with he loved us. So if you have an opportunity to come in the truth, and yes, it's tougher. It gets worse in the truth. It don't get better because the glory that's ahead that you're going to get, you have to go through something. But it says, God who is rich in mercy and great, uh, his, his great love where then he loved us. So all the people that you see that actually come into the truth, man, is is signs that the Lord actually, he, he loves them, man. Because the rest of the world don't have that love of the most high. They don't know who he really is. But you do. And that's why Satan is going to come for you. He's coming for you, man. Like, he came for all of us. He still be tapping and knocking on our doors. Still, man. And that's simple. But from there, let's go to, uh, what did I have you get? Revelation. Yeah, Revelation 22 and 18. And then uh, you get Deuteronomy 4 and 2 right quick. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 18. It says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city. And from the things which are written in this book. Right. And that's exactly how you see a lot of people getting X'd out of the book of life. And they're getting pledged added on to them. Because uh, the, the only reason I'm pulling these scriptures is because this is how Satan, this is how Satan uses, this is how he uses things that aren't written, man. He uses like traditions of men. Like we have a tradition and that's the Feast of Dedication. It's something that the man came up with. Men have traditions that they do and Satan tampered it and polluted with it. Not the dedication, but I'm just giving an example how Satan infiltrates stuff, man. And he will pollute it and have you in all in sin, man. And he have you in a bad position. And then he'll come to you and be like, you know, I got this for you. You know, this is this is this right here is what you need right here. That's why he leave. That's why not he leave. But he goes to mainly people that's in the slums, man. He go to them people in the slums because they know they don't have anything. And he offered them riches and glory. That's why they don't know how to act when they get that stuff, man. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to act at all, man. At all. He go to the hood. He sent Esau off to the hood. Get football players, basketball players, rappers. All these niggas come from the hood. He pulled them up out the, 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 the mud, man. But, uh... I got a precept for you. Yeah, go ahead. But, I, uh... Get Galatians 5 and 19. God. And just go with what you were saying. This is 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14. It says, Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. And Esau, really Satan, the devil's job is to kind of pervert them traditions. Right? It says, let me read it again. Have an eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. What he does right here is the point it says, beguiling unstable souls. He tricks you into thinking something when it's not that. It says, and heart, they have exercised with covetous practices. He changed up the whole meaning of something. Now what you push in is covetous. Different kind of practices. Different kind of traditions of men. You don't even know why you're celebrating things, but you're doing it. Hey, and that's do what thou wilt, man. You got your whole family saying, come over for Christmas. Don't know why they doing it. Or happy New Year's. That's not even the New Year. <laughs> right? <laughs> Be galling unstable stoves, man. For real. Right? Bringing in the New Year is January 1st. All right? Beguiling unstable souls, man. That's what he's doing. Hey, and one thing that um, Satan likes to do, when you come into the truth, you put a target on your back. Mm -hmm. Right? You was a target, but now you like a prime target. You perfect now. You exactly what he wants. 
So get ready for that, man. Prepare your soul for temptation. All right, that's it right now. Nah, like the brother said, prepare your soul for temptation, man. And that temptation, mostly, when that shit gonna come from nigga Hasha time. Because the scriptures say the most high won't tempt, ain't gonna tempt you. It's Satan that's coming to you, and he's tempting you with like he did get the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's coming at you with glory and riches, something we never. When we's in a yeah, exactly. When we's in a world we all desire, where they're selling drugs, doing uh, uh, uh as many videos you can, mm -hmm. sports, all these different things. He's this is Satan. Like yeah, dude. Once you get at a certain level, I'm gonna come holler at you, man. Well, they got uh, American Idol. Satan ready to bless all of them on American Idol. Hey, you put a target on your back once you get fame. Once, some, once you get notoriety, Satan, like, I want him. He got influence, right? We can beguile all of the people that's following him. Everybody that like him, we can have... Hey, um, one thing, um, I don't know if you've seen it. Um, it's a famous rapper named Lil Uzi. Mm. Lil Uzi Vert. And he real, like, satanic and demonic and kind of goth-like. And, you know, he weird, right? And uh, somebody, like, he was going live on Instagram yeah, or something. And I don't remember exactly what the person said. It was like, your music is, is evil or is demonic or you going to hell. No, he said, you sold your soul. Yeah. And he was like, whoever following me going to hell, too. He said, whoever listened to my music going to hell, too. Yeah. I was just like, dang, that's crazy. That's how prideful they are now, man. Man, and these, these famous, they not, they right in the open. Because they had tell you that I sold my soul to the devil. Mm -hmm. These rappers are saying that now. And that ain't even them, man. It's, at the end of the day, Satan ain't hot no more. He got the world tricked. Yeah. They making it look good. Mm -hmm. Damn, so if Satan can do this, why not be with him? And that's the whole point of Satan, man, is to make you think that he do not exist or that he has just as much authority as God. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, <laughs> bro, who you think he reporting to, bro? That's the crazy thing. So at the end of the day, you got played, man. All right, Satan getting the pat on the back. You did good. Doing John, well done. Right. Hey, what did it say? He transformed himself into an angel of light. He made wickedness look good. Mm -hmm. Riches, adultery, homosexuality. He put in the good colors on it. He transformed that angel of light, man, to something that looks good. People like doing them things now. And if you say that's bad, now you the bad person. Mm -hmm. That's say that's that's his power right there. That's perfect. His, Nigga, flip the script on you. Hey, you got young inmate talking about God is watching down on her. You a dyke. What are you talking about? We talking about a whole lesbian. Talking about God is looking down on her and watching her, protecting her. Mm. Bro, get out of here with that, man. For real. But, uh. Ash. All right, Con. One second. Uh, where's we at? I, had to, I just read Revelation 22. Okay. I pulled out a preset and I kind of. Uh, I kind of went off from uh, what you Oh, we Galatians 5. That's what we said. I had to run me to me to do. Nah, don't worry about that one. So you can get, get your preset right quick. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Bro, and that's exactly what you see happening. All under the umbrella of Hashatan, transforming itself into an angel of light, man. That's exactly what's going on. You got, like the brother said, you got homosexuality. He's talking about they want to thank God for what everything they got accomplished. Brad, is you playing? You playing, right? Like they got, I just found out, man, they got whole gay towns where it's only gays can be in this town. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, that's all. It, but these people talk about a God-fearing country. Come on, man. So kind, man. And it's another one. A precept for that is Proverbs 17 and 15. It says the same thing. So uh, get that uh, Galatians 5 and 19 right quick. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Right. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are so these. So the, at the end of the day, the people that operate in these things and that are successful in it, these are the people that Satan is blessing. If you see niggas rap about this, talk about this on Instagram or Twitter or whatever social media they own, they bragging and boasting in these kind of spirits. The Satan is blessing them. That's why they. That's why why they are where they are. But go ahead. I'm gonna read it again. It says, "Now the works of the flesh are manifest, right. which are these: right. adultery, right. fornication." And we know rappers promote that twenty four seven. 
They they rap they promote adultery and they promote fornication, man. Worshiping money. Well, go ahead. Uncleanness, right? Levi uh, lasci lasciviousness, lasciviousness, perverts, idolatry, right? Witchcraft. And hatred. we see that too. You promoting selling drugs, witchcraft. Go ahead. Hatred. Hatred. They making diss songs on their brothers when they know who the real enemy is. Go ahead. Various variousness. Right? They they want to be different from their brothers. They don't want to be Israelites. Right. Go ahead. Emulations. Emulations. They want to be better. They think they better than their brothers now because they got a little money and they got a little ice. Right. You dirty and you a bum now. Bro, but you signed your soul over though. I'm better than you right now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but go ahead. Wrath, strife, seditions, rebellion. They ain't going to listen when them scriptures come out. Go ahead. Heresies, blasphemy against the most high, man. What Boosie say? When uh when he says, uh, the most high tell me to stop eating pork, put his finger in the air, bro. Flip the most high off. Mm, I do remember that. Come on, man. Heresy, blasphemy. Go ahead. Envying. Right? Murder. Like envying each other. Murdering each other. Go ahead. Drunkenness. Getting drunk. Reviling. Right? And such like of the which I tell you before, as I do also told you right? in times past. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Hey, it's, a, it's, it's simple, man. You either follow the most high God or you follow Satan. And matter of fact, get uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 21. And I'll, let's, let's prove it, man. If you operate in these spirits, man, and you boasting and bragging in it, bro, you're not making it to the kingdom. And that's Satan's job is to get you not to make it to the kingdom. That's his job. And he's using his children. Why do you think Esau promotes straight blasphemy against the most high they when they when it comes to food they promote pepperoni pizza why just pepperoni why sausage pizza why canadian bacon pizza why pepperoni is the most the number one uh, america's number one pizza pepperoni why go over there at arabia and try to walk around with some pepperoni pizza though all right but go ahead Right, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21. Right. It says, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Right. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Man, you can't do both. You got to pick one. Hey, I'm going to deal with this with my people or I'm going to, or I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I want to be, I want to prosper in the world, man. I want to be somebody. Is that what they tell you? Be somebody. Don't be what people want you to be. Be who you want. Something like that. I seen that at the school, man, the elementary. It was, I mean, the posters yeah, and stuff. it was like, don't be who uh, people want you to be. Be who you want to be or be who you. I was like, this is promoting, like, do what the hell you want to do, basically, man. And that's simple. Go ahead. So, Prisa, this is the book of Joshua, 24 and 15. <clears throat> and if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord... Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether it be the God of which your fathers served that were of the other side of the flood or the God of the Amorites in whom uh, land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Right. So that's that was Joshua talking to the nation of Israel coming out the wilderness. He like, bro, because, you know, as soon as they came out the wilderness, what they do? They go into a uh, fornication, man. So he was like, bro. Choose who you're going to serve this day. Whether it be our fathers that was on the other side of the flood, you either, or you want to serve the gods of the Amorites, these idols, man. You choose this day. But he said for me, in my house, we're going to serve the most high God. We're going to sit here and us today, we're going to suffer patiently like the Lord did. Because it's not just, the Christian churches tell you, only thing you have to do is just believe. That's all you have to do is believe. So get uh, Philippians 1 and 29. All you have to do is believe. No, that's not just it, man. That is not just it. It's more to it. And this is and this more to it that it's talking about. Nobody wants to go through. Why you think people do the stupidest shit? Try to get famous. Try to get rich, man. Try. It's a get rich scheme. That's all it's about, man. Go ahead. God, this is Philippians, chapter one and verse twenty-eight. Uh, twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. And you can start at twenty-eight. All right, come. It says, and then nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, right. but to you 
of salvation and that of God. Right. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ. Right. Not only to believe on him. So it's not only to believe on Hamashiach Yahweh That's not the only thing. It's something else. Go ahead. But also to suffer for his sake. Bro, you got to suffer. And that's something Satan is not promoting. He's like, bro, you can get rich. Whatever your talent is, whatever you're good at, use it. Use it in whatever way you want to. Man, people are getting rich off pranks. People are getting rich off pranks. People are getting rich off gamer. Bro, come on, man. This is, this is the generation of stupidity, man. Wicked and adulterous generation. But uh, let's get uh, uh, Obadiah 1 and 3 right quick. Because at the end of the day, Satan has children and the Most High God has children. Just like how the Most High God wants you to follow his law, statute, commandments and have faith in his only begotten son, Satan does the opposite. No, you ain't got to follow no commandments. Do what you want. And you best believe some of Satan's children is from the nation of Israel. A prime example is Creflo Dollar. He says Satan wants you to keep the commandments. That's a, that's a uh, what do they call it? It's a tactic. A psychology of tactic, man, that he use on you. Satan wants you to follow the commandments. Bro, what are you talking about? Satan, where does it say that in the Bible? That Satan wants you to follow the commandments. That's a psychology tactic, man. Oh, is you talking about what, what that pastor said? Yeah, yeah, he said Satan wants you to follow the commandments. Yeah, he said because Jesus died to free people. Mm -hmm. But not understanding what the the, uh, the law of liberty is, man. They don't get it. It's only, you know, we already went over this, man. That's a whole right. other lesson. But go ahead. Uh, um, you wanted me to start at where? Uh, verse 3. Okay, kind This is Obadiah. Isaiah 14 and 12. Obadiah verse 3. It says, The proud of thine heart have deceived thee. Right. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks. So this is, this is uh, going into Satan's children. Satan's children are all prideful, man. They even get to the point where they think they don't need God anymore. This is how prideful they get. And this is the most high God rebuking Satan's children. We talking about the seed of Satan's children. The wicked, the ones who was created to be Satan's children. Go ahead. Uh, it says, whose habitation is high. Right. That said in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Right. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence... Will I bring thee down, said the Lord. Right, so these these people that's, that exalt themselves, who dwell in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, which we know who that is, these will be considered Satan's children. Because if you go to Malachi 1, it literally tells you they are the border of wickedness. And once you think of Satan, you think of wickedness. Simple, man. This is simple. You put two and two together, man. It talk, the Bible talks about Satan having children. Mm -hmm. So it says, the pride of thine heart has deceived thee, man. They not only that they deceive them, but it deceive everybody that follows them, man. Everyone that follows them. Thinking that, you know, like Satan put in his head, like, we can do, we can defeat God. This is Satan gonna deceive you in any way he can, because that's his job, man. It's to deceive you. Keep you ignorant by blessing you with stupid stuff, man. You got people still wanting to be rich. You got football players still signing contracts. All this when the world is ending now. Nigga, you signed your soul over only to enjoy a couple of years of your, your career. Simple, man. All right, so from there, let's go to... Uh, yeah. All right, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. This is the, the book of 14 and 12. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 22. How long, ye simple ones... I'm going to read that again. How long... Ye simple ones, but ye love simplicity. And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Mm. All right, come. Read that one more time. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Right, and this is to the ones who, who, man, at, at the end of the day, who actually been taught of the Most High God. He calling you simple. How long you going to be simple because the brother sitting there out there telling you, you are Israelite. Mm -hmm. Repent. Salvation is for you. The Lord died for you. You simple as hell to ignore that. He says, how long will you simple ones love simplicity? The simplicity of this world, man. This shit is simple, man. This is simple, man. The fact that there's no moral rules. It talks about how Esau's kingdom is profane. It's uh, 
profane and uh, what are you talking about? Uh, Hebrews twelve and sixteen. Esau is profane and what? Oh, you talking about Hebrews? Yeah, Hebrews twelve and six. Um. Uh, no, you're talking about. Uh, it says there's not uh, any a profane, profane person. person and uh, Dang, why it was. Bi I know the word is biblically sacred, it says, but it's a word for it. No, nah, Hebrews twelve and sixteen. Let's yeah, be 16. any fornicator or profane. Prof person. Yeah, fornicator, and that talks about uh, profane. I mean. Profane means biblically sacred. There's nothing biblically sacred about him. This whole kingdom. Right? So, all right. Uh, read that uh, Proverbs one more time. Let's finish that one. How This is Proverbs 1 and 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Right. And the scorners delight in their scorning. Right. And scorners delight in their scorning. People delight being in this damn society at the bottom of society. They delight in their scorning. But go ahead. And fools hate knowledge. So fools hate knowledge. If you go to Sirach 1919, I believe it is. Let me see. Right, yeah. Go to uh, Sirach 19 and 19. It tells you what, uh, what, what he's talking about when it says fools hate knowledge, man. It tells you what, he, what they actually hate. It's the book of Sirach. Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 19. Right. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Right. And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of, of immortality. And this is why he's calling them a fool. Because they reject these things right here. The tree of immortality. They reject the, the commandments, which is the doctrine of life. They reject these things. That's why the Lord like, nigga, you a fool for that. Fools hate knowledge. Fools hate this knowledge, man. Simple. You got something? Con, I'm a, you told me to get Isaiah, though. Isaiah 14, 12. Con, this is the book of Isaiah. Chapter so we, we still dealing with Satan's children, right? Go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, and verse 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So this is talking about when Lucifer falls, when his kingdom comes down. When he come down, you coming down too, man. Everything that you have that he gave you for that moment of time, it's all coming down. And you coming down with it. Then what you got? You signed your soul to Satan. Through his children. Simple, man. And like I said, man, Esau's job is not to keep his end of the contract. He is the wicked. That's never, when you look at any movie, any anything, man, Satan's job was never to keep his end of the deal. His job is to get you to sign it. But go ahead. It says, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nation? Right. Now, how did he weaken the nations? Dealing with fornication, you know, adultery, all these different things against what's pleasing to the most high. This is how he weakened the nations, man. Because at one point in time, the nations, all the nations had a sense of who the most high God, God of Israel is. But he weakened them by playing God. Now everybody, all the nations bow down to Esau. Right. They bow down to Satan through Esau. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He weakened the nations. But go ahead. Okay. Verse 13 says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Right. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So this is them trying to play God, man. This is that seal, that signature, that seal. That's why they want to get you to sign them signatures. That's their seal on we own you. Just like how the Most High God has a spiritual mark on you to let you know who his children is. Satan the same way, man. But Satan does everything through physical. But go ahead. It says, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. Right? North. The sides of the north. We know that's talking about North America because this is an end, end time prophecy. Because if you read verses 1 through 3, it tells you about us going back to our homeland and taking them captives. This whole chapter is a future prophecy. And it says the in the sides of the north. Where are we at? North America. Well, go ahead. 14 says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Satan's children, man. Want to be like the most high. Satan is portraying like he want to be like the most high, but Satan knows his position. He got the wicked believing this. Hey, there's going to be a time where, man, they, they, you know, they, they send up all these enchantments and these prayers to Satan, but it's going to be a time where Satan really 
forsakes the wicked, and the wicked has to go through everything they, mm -hmm. every, all they punishment and totality they have to go through it. And they're going to be calling on Satan, and Satan ain't going to answer them. Satan did his job, just like with Job. When Satan was done doing his job, he, he was gone. Simple. Right. He didn't get in trouble. He didn't get in trouble with nothing. He's gone. Good job, Satan. Right. You handled that. Most, I'll probably applaud him. You I didn't good. think you was that good <laughs> now. Damn, you good. Right. All right, so Khan, is that 15? Ah, so like yeah. Yeah, read verse 15 too, and All we'll right. be done with that. Khan. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 15. And matter of fact, we're going to read 15 and 16 because I want to show, show something. Khan, it says, yet. Thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They're going to be brought down to a hellish condition, man. And everything that's in the society that's with it, man. So enjoy be, be them blessings from Satan. You thinking that you're going to enjoy it for a whole, your whole lifetime, man. Oh, everybody thought that. And Sodom and Gomorrah, they didn't think they was going to be destroyed right then and there. And the days of Noah, they didn't think they was going to be destroyed right then and there, man. Those famines that happened in the land, they didn't think that was going to happen in their lifetime. Egypt, they didn't think that was going to happen in their lifetime, man. Just like the most high God child got the, the world thinking that it's not going to happen in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's why they live in their life to the fullest. They got this YOLO spirit on them. The most high want you to have that spirit. Even us Israelites, we love the elements of surprise. How much more the most high? Mm -hmm. It tells you in the scriptures, he's going to come when no man think of him to come. He's going to come as a thief in the night. Simple, man. But uh, let's read this next verse. I want to show you something. Verse 16 says, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shape kingdoms? And that's just, it's talking about Esau, Idumia, man. Simple. It's talking about Satan's children. For all the people that say Lucifer is Satan, that's not, you only see Lucifer recorded one time in the Bible, man. And it tells you in verse 16 that it was a man. And that man signif uh symbolic for a nation of people, which is Satan's children, though. So we can you can link it up in that way, but you cannot say Lucifer is Satan, because that's not what's not what that's talking about. So from there, let's get uh you have something right? Yeah. All right, kind of go ahead. Kind Revelations 18 and 3, right quick. Um, I'm gonna wait on that. I don't want to throw off, I don't want to go off. You sure? Yeah, I'm gonna wait. All right, get Revelations 18 and 3. Got it. God, this is the book of, you got it? All right, God. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 18 and verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her del delicacies. Delicacies. Right. So at the end of the day, this is talking about Babylon the Great, which we know as America. And you go through the scriptures, right? So Revelation 17 and 18, talk, it prophesies about the downfall of America. It talks about her being burnt with fire in uh, the 17th chapter. And in 18, it explains how America made all nations drink. All nations are promoting this stupidity. All nations are promoting the, the spiritual demon Satan. They all in one accord. They all in cahoots with each other. And we see this all around the world, man. Satan blessing, blessing the world with stupid stuff, man. As long as they keep doing it, he's going to keep blessing you. Until he's, he, the, the most high calls him to draw back, man. Right? So drop down to verse 23 now. Go ahead, Ot. Revelation chapter but, 18. But if, when we drop down to verse 23, man, we'll see, man. Let's see, let's see what it says. Come on, up. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 23. Right. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all the... In thee. In thee. So Sorry. this is talking about the same thing Isaiah 14 is talking about. Isaiah and John prophesied about this downfall of this, this great kingdom. It talks about in uh, Isaiah, we didn't get it, but it says that, that golden city. Mm -hmm. What's more golden than America that have all nations under subjection right now? The earth was given into the hand of the wicked, man. The same people that's in rulership right now who go around the whole earth sanctioning countries, telling another country what they can and can't do on their soil. Go ahead. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more and all in thee. Right. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by the sorceries 
were all nations deceived. Right, all nations deceived, man. Even you to think that that Satan can't bless you. To think that Satan is underground with a, a red man with a pitchfork in his hand. Satan ain't down there. He up here with us. Deceiving the masses, man. With technology and all this different, man. That stuff is of Satan. Smart cars and smartphones and smart TVs and all this stuff is to keep you distracted and keep you away from the most high God, man. At the end of the day. It's for no other use. It's for no other. Why do you think Esau just gives it out so freely like that, man? Because it's to keep you distracted from their new world agenda, agenda which set up by Hashatan. Right? So, uh, you had something? It said that they was deceived by the sorceries, sorceries man. Hey, and the elder brought it out. Uh, the elder brought it out. He told you. He said, when you're watching TV and you see a Burger King or a Sonic commercial, and the next thing you know, you're hungry. That's simple. That's sorcery. Witchcraft. Just like when you see a TV and they be like 550% uh, off. You're going to get that. And the same thing with this stupidity. They promote somebody that, that made a lot of money off creating something small or the prank thing. You remember um, Boot Game? The what? Boot yeah, games. Boom. <laughs> yeah, man. Where he, uh, like, he'll walk up on you. Yeah, he'll take your stuff and, and start run. running. And he made money off that. Support and you got other people getting off on that. You got another, I seen another dude, he trying to do it now. For real? Man, I was like, damn. Crazy, man. He already started it, man. So people going to follow it. Mm -hmm. And that goes into every Man, I've never seen. I'm telling you, this prank thing, this it still blows my mind, man. How there, there is couples making millions off pranks. Off pranking each other. And you sitting here telling me that the Most High is blessing these people. Hell no, man. This is Satan blessing them. Why? Because it's entertainment, it's distraction. So this new world order can kick off. Right? So let's get 1 John 2 and 15 right quick. So we identify Satan's children. Now let's identify the most high God's children, man. This is how you identify the most high God's children. God. And I could have grabbed more scriptures, but I just grabbed, you know, these two, you know, just the uh these is overall scriptures. This is how you know in totality. Get that. Okay, this is the book of 1 John. Chapter 2 and verse 15. Right. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So we're not supposed to love the world, neither the things that are in the world. What are things that are in the world, man? What? No, what does the world follow after? Money. Money. That's, and that's really it. Because with money, they're going to get everything they need. One thing they do not follow is this Bible, man. That's why he's saying, be not of the world. But well, go ahead. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why is he saying that? If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because the world is following after Satan. We just read that. That the uh, the world followed after the beast. Hashatan. The world followed after him. They marveled. They wondered after him. Hey, it even There's a scripture in Revelation where it even said that John marveled after what he seen uh, when he was getting the visions of how great America was going to be. It said that the angel was like, why are you marveling at this? This is nothing to be marveled at. This is going to be a wicked ass society. So, yeah, you would get caught up in marveling after this place. But at the end of the day, that's the whole point of this place. That's the whole point of Satan. Satan, man, ain't none of us stronger than Satan. If you think you can take on Satan by yourself, you're a damn fool, man. Satan will offer you some stuff that you always wanted. But what you going to do, though? What are you going to do? You going to turn it down? You're going to follow after the Most High God? You're going to take up your cross and follow after the Yahweh Shah Mashiach? Or you're going to take the easy route and enjoy the riches of this world, man? Well, go ahead. Verse 16. Verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. Right? So the lust of the flesh, filly, filly, touchy, touchy, man. I got to have it. I got to have it. And it says the lust of the eyes. I got to see it. I have to see this. I have to see this. This is of Satan, man. This is what the Most High God told us not to be a part of. Well, go ahead. I got to see Christmas lights. I got to see it to believe it. Right. See it to believe it, which we, we know that's not faith. Go ahead, though. It says, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Hey, he already told you the people that's prideful of the world, he's going to bring them down low. He said they're going to dwell in tortures and torments that dwell in pride. 
Then we were just read in Obadiah, the pride of thine heart has deceived you. So it says the pride of life is not of the father, but of the world, man. And that's what you see the world, they full in pride, man. Look at these rappers. Look at these so-called stars in general, man. I don't give a damn how they making millions. But these are the most prideful people on earth, man. You can't tell them nothing. You can't t tell them nothing about God. It can be the elders. Be trying to show them stuff out the Bible. They think they know God already. But they know the wrong God, man. But go ahead. Verse 17 says, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. Right, so everything that you're dealing with, that stuff gonna come to naught. And we just brought that out, man. All that stuff is going to, when America comes down, all that stuff that you had comes down. Then where does that leave you? So go ahead. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And that's talking about immortality. So at the end of the day, you got a choice. You got to make a choice. You want to you wanna, you wanna get that bag? Or you want to get that spiritual bag? Physical bag, spiritual bag. It's up to you at the end of the day, man. So, uh... Let's get to James 4 and 4. We almost done here. James 4 and 4. God, this is the book of James, chapter 4, John 3, 6, 9, and 9. verse 4. It says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, right? know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? So the friendship of this world, you're trying to be a part of this society. You're trying to make a name for yourself in a society. We all have to be a part of this society. Well, you're trying to make a name for yourself in a society. You're trying to be part of this world. That's what the Lord talking about. Go ahead. Because you will hear some Edomites or some, some wicked Jake talking about, well, you live in a society, you're a part of this society. Well, we understand it. We're talking about trying to make a name for yourself in a society. You trying to be one of the great in a society, man. Love in this society. Right. You want to be a damn black community leader now. You want to be the next Martin Luther or Malcolm X now. But go ahead. You trying to help America live forever. Yeah, that's the... He sealed it all up right there. You trying to help America continue. Beautifully put. It says, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world... Right. ...is the enemy of God. And that's clear. This is how we identify the most high God's children. Because they're going to detach themselves away from the world, man. They're going to make sure that they're not not—they're not doing the same thing. They're going to examine themselves, and they're going to examine everything around them, and they're going to uh, detach themselves from the ways of this world, man. Even if it comes into losing things in the process, man. Counting the cost. This is, uh, this is how you identify the most high God's children, man. Satan going to give you whatever you want in this society. The most high God is not going to do that, man. He can give you what you need. Yeah, He's going to give you what you need. Proverbs 30. Right. We got to get that right quick. God. Go ahead, Dwight. Is that Proverbs 30 and 7? God. Mm -hmm. It's the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, uh -huh. that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right. So read that one more time. God, it says Romans 12 and 2 right. and be not conformed to this world right so it says be not conformed to this world don't follow after the ways of this world now it didn't say the society it says the world why because these other countries we ain't supposed to be following them anyway so how much more America mm -hmm. but go ahead but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind every day we are supposed to be figuring out how we can detach from this world every day we need to be figuring out how we please the most high God this is how we be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Uh, getting away from those wicked things we all did. It told us in Ephesians 2. We all had our times passed in the conversation of this world. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the mind, man. But we got to transform that by coming back to the law, statutes, commandments. But go ahead. That you may prove what is good. Right. And acceptable and perfect will of God. And that's a perfect precept right there. This is how we identify the most high God's children. Read the last part one more time. It says, and acceptable. That we may prove what? Slot here. That we may prove what is good. Like, prove what is good. How do you prove to the most high what's good? And he says, rise up against the evildoers. Which, that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's our job. This is how you, you see who's the wicked and who's not. Because we're the ones bringing it out. 
we should, we're telling you, man, the world is wicked. Satan can bless you too. And that's simple, man. Well, go ahead. Where I'm already going to say that ye may prove what is good right. and acceptable. You got to prove what's acceptable too to the Most High God. Go ahead. And perfect. Right. Will of God. Perfect. Didn't, he, didn't Yahweh Shah Mashiach say, be ye perfect as your father is perfect? And then it says, will of God. And you go to Psalms 40 and 8, it tells you what the will of God is. The law of that is commandments. Mm. That's the will of the Most High. But go ahead. I, mm. oh, that, was, that was it. No, I'm talking about First John chapter 2, verse 15. Yeah, I just read that. Right, okay. But if you want to break it down, though. All right, God. So look, uh, where we at? Uh, we already read called, that. I got the Proverbs, and I'm holding yeah, one. Yeah, I want, I want that Proverbs. Yeah, yeah, bring that Proverbs out. Con. So this is Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 7. Right? Two things have I required of thee, then my, deny me them not before I die. Right, so this is uh, Solomon. He says, there's two things I require. Lord, the wisest man on earth, this is all he requires. And he says, deny me them not before I die. But go ahead. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Right. And that's what we all should be asking the most high God to deliver from us. Deliver us from these vanity, man. You being rich, what the hell is vain? That's vanity, man. You having everything you need is vanity. You don't need everything. You don't need everything you see and everything you can touch. You don't need it. It's not always good for you. But go ahead. It says, give me neither poverty nor riches. So he says, don't make me poor. Poverty is being very poor, dirt poor. He says, nor make me rich. But go ahead. But feed me with food convenient for me. We all, this is what we all need. And why com food convenient for us? Because it, it keeps us level-headed and it keeps us without being having too many distractions. Like, and it's simple, man. This is how strong it is. I can give one of these brothers right here, if I had it, I can give one of them $5 million and then we would see lesser of that brother. Why? Because he's out spending money. It's not like he don't want to study or not. He's spending money, though. That's simple. But go ahead. It says, lest I be fool and deny thee, right? And say, who is the Lord? Right? And this is what you're going to say in your heart. You don't physically say this. You're going to say this in your heart. And sometimes people are blind to the fact that they're doing that. But that's just what it is. Go ahead. It says, or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. And that's what the brother, all the captain always go over. Taking the Lord's name in vain is you representing him wrongly. You stealing, you representing him wrongly doing that. And that's what that's talking about. So uh, get yours, my bad. Okay. This is Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to start at verse 10. Let me read it for you. Um, kind of, Baba Kasha. Sorry, guys. Ephesians chapter 6. I want you to start at verse 10, by the way, Sean. Ephesians 6 and 10. Yeah, start at 10. So I can. All right, so this is Ephesians 6 and 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Right, so be strong for the most high God. Right. Put on the whole armor of God. This is how you be strong. You put on the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. It says, so you can with so you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. What is wiles of the devil? What does that really mean? Right? And I got it right here. Oh, okay. Right. And the blue letter, right? I was already meditating on it. The wiles of the devil. Right? It's um Methodia. It says, from a compound, cunning arts, deceit, craft, mm. or trickery. That's the wiles of the devil. Right? The devil don't have to put a gun to your head to get your ass to do something. He's crafty. He's trickery. He, he uses trickery and deceit. And he's cunning. He's crafty. He sits there and meditate and plot on you. And when you're like, man, I need some help. He writes, I got you. Right here. I'll help you up. Hey, what, um, take my made, hand. What do you say off of my king? Mufasa! Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> Bro, he waiting right there the whole time, plotting on you. And if you ain't got on the whole armor of God, you're going to get tricked. What did he do to Yahusha? He was plotting on him when he was up there fast. He said, I'll give you riches. Right? You see all of these skyscrapers? All of these whores could be yours. That rhyme, that's what he might rhyme. 
right? Satan always in um, with, um, working with music. He gonna make it sound real good. It's gonna sound real good in your ears. It's gonna be looking real good in your eyes and it's gonna taste real sweet. Mm -hmm. That's how Satan works. And then when you digest it, you all messed up. Like McDonald's. Right, and look real good. <laughs> Tastes good going in, horrible coming out. Right, for real. Um, I want to keep reading though, verse 12. God. It says, uh, and it's like it, just to say this too, mm -hmm. and that made me think of it, uh, the, the moral of the story of Yahweh Shah and, and Satan tempting him, Satan came at him at his weakest point, mm -hmm. 40 days in the wilderness. So he's going to come at you in the same way. When he alone. You weak. Like, hey, what's up? Got you. Well, you say verse 12, right? Yeah. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not just fleshly. It's a spiritual battle. We don't just, we're not just fighting Satan with our hands and that's not what happened. Everybody think that Satan was fighting God and God kind of grabbed him by the neck and put him in a, and he barely got him and he fell asleep. No, they're not fighting like that. Elbowed him in the lips. Right. <laughs> he barely got him off of him. No, and you're not fighting Satan that way. Y'all not squaring up. It's not a round two and a fatality afterwards. No, that's not what it's looking like. It's a day in, day out. Week in, week out. Month by month. Year by year. It's a spiritual battle. Right? As you're going to serve evil and wickedness. And you're going to work for, for money and riches and for um, uh, abominations and for America and for your enemies. Or is you gonna serve righteousness? Are you gonna serve God? You gonna keep the laws? You gonna have faith? You gonna stay true to it? You gonna be long suffering? You gonna be gentle? You gonna have the fruits of the spirit? That's the fight. That's the spiritual fight. Come on, Khan. It says, but against principalities. We uh fighting against principalities. Where is those principalities located? Right, keep reading. Against powers, against the rulers of darkness is, of this world. Who is the rulers of darkness in this world? It tells you that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Who is the chief? Who is the prince? Who is the prince of darkness? On the fleshly level, it's Esau, Idumia. We know this. The Edomite, white men. Right? But who is the prince? It's Satan. It's the spiritual demon Satan who's stirring up their minds and making them believe that wickedness is good. This look good, don't it? It sound good, right? Here, take a bite. That's him. And he good at that. Come on. You shall not surely die. <laughs> <laughs> you, sh you shall not surely die. That's what he... And he like, damn, that sound... <laughs> they like, hold up. It's just, it ain't gonna kill me. Right. If I do this, I am not gonna die. Right? I ain't gonna die. No, nigga, you definitely gonna die. <laughs> Matter of time. This nigga, I've been doing it. Hey, when we, we ran into one brother, and um, we're in the grocery store. We're getting some stuff for a barbecue. And it's me. Uh, was you there? It was me, Soldier Thahawam. Uh, Captain uh, Debar, it was another brother. Kodachi was right there, right? No, was it Hezekiah? No, Hezekiah. We was in Winco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we seen the um an older gentleman, right? An older gentleman, right? Classic Jake. He pushed in his buggy. He got his food in there. And then he did a U turn. Oh, I need my bacon. Mm -hmm. Right in front of us. And then we kind of like, what the fuck? This nigga blacked out. So we keep doing our thing. And the spirit came out with Captain Debar. He like, hold on. We got to go over here. So we start talking to the dude. Oh, and he kind of lacing him up like, why are you eating pork? You know, and we came up to him like gentle. We wasn't trying to like, you better not. You know, we didn't do that. We was trying to, you know, do it decently in order. We trying to be wise. Master Biddle's like, hey, do you believe in the Bible? You know, the dude had a, a tie on, a suit. He looked at like he was probably a pastor. That's what I asked him. I said, you a pastor? Right. Um, basically, he was like. Me eating pork ain't gonna kill me. I've been doing this for 44 years. Yeah. You shall not surely die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He basically said that I am not gonna die. How you gonna tell me? I've been doing this for almost 50 years. Mm -hmm. He said this to me. He was like, when you live to be 44, then you can die. Like, 
What? You shall not surely die. That's what it made me think of. I think he said it worse. I think he said, I'd like to see you live up to something like that. Oh, you was there. Zion, you was there? He was, he was really, really pushing that port, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it was like, you know, you know how Crips, like, they come in your face. Think about it. We just read. This is spiritual war. You know how Crips on a physical level, like, it's, it's Crip, and they throw it up in your face. This is how I looked at it with the damn bacon and the demon. I'm like, did this demon just fly in our face like that? Right, when he said, nah, hold on, let me pull when out we, that sword. <laughs> right. about to chop all that up. When we saw him the second time, he like showed us, he was flaunting oh, the bacon. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. flaunting the bacon. He had the bacon like, what's up? Yeah, like he was banging, the demon was banging his set, basically. basically. <laughs> banging pork, banging right. his abomination. You know what it is. Right, exactly. He definitely had the That's content for the faith. He, he was up. definitely flexing on us like, uh, what you gonna do though? Right, crazy. we had to ride out on that demon. Right, <laughs> you got to be ready at all times. We just trying to get barbecue, but um, re let's yeah, get going. It's, it's more. It says against spiritual wickedness in high places. Like, hold on. Let's start from the top one more time. It right? says, "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness the rulers, of this world. The rulers of darkness." You got the earthly rulers. You got the spiritual ruler. Hashatan got children too. We've been talking about this. He's that prince. And he elect men to do the work that he need to be done too. He choosing. You know how I tell you in John chapter, is it 15 and 16? He said, I have not chosen you. Yeah, 15, 16. I mean, you have not chosen me, but I chose you. you. Satan saying, you ain't choose me. I chose you. I snatched you up. You mind. The wicked elite of Esau. Right. The 13 yeah. families. Right. Um, keep going. It's kind of, it says, uh, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's what we're fighting against. Spiritual wickedness in high places. And the only way you're going to succeed in that battle, the only way you're going to win that fight, is if you got on the armor of God. Only way. Right? If you actually moving how you're supposed to be moving, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to cut that spirit. You're not even gonna know that Satan is on you. How do you how do you fight off an enemy? Right? How do you identify an enemy? That's exactly <laughs> look, that's the beginning. <laughs> how do you fight off something that you don't know is there? That's like you swinging out, you fighting a shadow. You're not gonna win. You don't even how you gonna fight or win against an enemy and you can't even tell that he's an enemy. You can't even tell that that's an enemy. You can't even, you don't even know that Satan got you in his grip, in his vices, in his hand. Right? You think he a friend. You think he the good guy. That's how it always is in the movies. It'd be the person you would never expect, even in real life, not even in movies. Because he comes as an angel of light. He comes at Exactly what that is. He come as an angel of light. Right, man. smoother than butter. Right. Just sign this. I'll get you some bread. That's all you need to do. Right. Sign this. You trust me, right? And it's crazy because look at the stuff that he do gives you. That pro it proves it's deeper than that. They give you millions of dollars. And this this stuff is supposed to like to uh be for society for people to eat. And mm -hmm. it tells you about that in Syrac, huh? Bread and water and all that is exactly, good. Yeah. Yeah, all the things that's necessary. But they give you way more than what you need, man. The only thing I'm doing is rapping. Hey, what like, it's for the people anyway. <laughs> what does it say in Luke, right? Here, I get it. What is it? Uh, Luke 21. Luke 21. All right, I know um, my captain really liked this verse too. Luke 21. Um, I want you to start at 34. 21 34, God. 21 and 34. Mm -hmm. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. With what? Surfeiting. And the, all of the, the men. Um, that's renowned or on high in America, they overtake him and surfeiting. When it comes to money, they have more than enough money. They surfeiting. You see them holding up a, a brick of money, surfeiting in money. You see them laying on money. You see them throwing money up. Mm -hmm. You see them got a, ho a whole bunch of women, right? Surfeiting in women, surfeiting in idolatry, surfeiting in everything, surfeiting in drugs. Surfeiting in jewelry, idolizing these things, idolizing cars, women, clothes, designer bags. You see, these men are surfeiting. Their hearts, their mind has been overtaken with surfeiting. 
and I got the definition of surfeit. It says, cause someone to desire no more or something as a result of having consumed or done it to excess. It says, I am surfeited with shopping. They're overindulging. If you're shopping for eight hours in a day, you're surfeiting. Right. It says, overfill, glut, mm -hmm. cram, stuff, stuff. overindulge, Over fill. <laughs> They're saying what it's saying. Hey, read the rest of the verse, though. Con, it says, and drunkenness uh -huh. and cares of this life. You can be surfeiting and drunkenness. you drinking every... As soon as you wake up, you're drinking some vodka, right? You're taking a, a shot. Okay. Hey, it tells you you can be surfeiting. Come on. It says, uh, and drunkenness and cares, cares of, of this, this life, life, so that they come upon you unawares. And don't be surfeiting in the cares of this life. You're getting caught up in all of the, um, the newest designer clothes and the newest phone and um, who got the best Gucci belt. It's a whole bunch of folly. Hey, I don't know what's been going on. I just be trying to get that bag. You been That's... surfeiting. <laughs> you surfeiting, bro. You surfeiting in sports. Yep. You know every man on every team, on every roster in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But you don't know one verse in the Bible. Well, you know John 3.16, and that's it, you know? Or you know Philippians 4 and 13. Look, man, you getting caught up in the cares of the life. Can you give me a closing? The closing. cares of the world, yeah, man. Can you give me a closing precept, too? Definitely, I got you right here. All right, yeah, get that, and I'm going to get this. All right, Con, I got this. All right. You want to bring mine up? Yeah, yeah. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 2, and in verse that. 11. Con. Let Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Right, so we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. And it's talking about, Paul is talking to the people that know the law, that know the Bible. This is who he's talking to. The people in the world, they already, the Lord wanted them to be caught up in the world. So we're not ignorant to his devices. We know what he comes at us at. That's why we're breaking it down to you right now. We're breaking it down through the scriptures. This is how Satan comes at people. We're not being taken away by Satan's devices because we know how crafty this nigga can be. Mm -hmm. Simple. And we're going to stay the hell away from any. We don't desire to be rich, man. I'm cool where I'm at because I know what the kingdom offers, man. I'm cool suffering where I'm at. Call me a bum. Call me whatever the hell you want. I'll be there. They call us fools. They call us crazy. They call us everything. Add to it. Call us bums. Hey, cool. We'll be all that, man. We don't want you... You, 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 we don't want the women that, that only want men for money. We, we Gold let y'all have, yeah, we let y'all have that, man. Y'all can have that because that's what y'all desire. This is what y'all work your whole life for to get people that only love you for the things that you have. Not women that, women and men that love you because we struggling together. This is who we are. This is where we come from, I mean. Simple, man. So at the end of the day, man. Satan has taught the masses not to fear the Most High by using the same thing that we're taught by the Most High. And what, how? John 3, 16. God loves the world. Uh, Philippians 4 and 13. Through, all th through Christ, I can do all things. Mm -hmm. So this is how Satan taught the world. And he changed his, transformed himself to an angel of light. But he taught you at the same time that Jesus don't want you to fear God. Or Jesus is God. He taught you the precept, uh, the fear of men. This is what Satan has taught you. And this is why everybody thinks that the Most High God is not the king of terrors, man. Because Satan has tricked the whole world into believing that the only way, that you're not supposed to fear him. But you're supposed to fear Satan through his movies. Vampires and demons and ghosts and all that. This Satan wants you to fear him more than fearing the Most High God at the end of the day, man. Because when you heard about the Bible... You don't fear God. But when you hear about ghosts and demons, and you you start, you think of Satan. and you scared of Satan. So he did a number on the masses at the end of the day. Right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, get that. Sean. So at the end of the day, man, the whole lesson is about Satan can bless you too, man. Don't get it wrong, though. The Most High God has blessed us, and he will bless you. He will. But you got to use spiritual discernment and understand when you're being blessed. I ain't been doing nothing the most high God told me. How do I got this? Huh. 
use weigh the balance in that. Or I've been, I, I, I believe I've been doing what the most I got requiring me, so he's blessing me. You know if you're doing what you're supposed to do or not. That's simple. So you would know if it's Satan blessing you or if it's the most high blessing you. Because think about it, Satan wants to, he plays this God role. You do what he asks, he gonna give you what you want. Right. Simple. But well, uh, get that. Kind. This is the book of Syrac, chapter 43 and verse 30. Right. It says, when you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can. For even yet will you far exceed, and when you exalt him, put forth all your strength, and be not weary, for you can never go far enough. Hey, Amen. So, Lord willing, somebody who's edified with this lesson, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh, and the 12 tribes out here doing this work in truth and sincerity. Death to America, don't take the vaccine. Shalom, wa barak, mashpaka. Shalom.